Okay, what I'm doing here is I've mixed up sap green and uh, red ochre. And these are the colours I use to make my darks. I don't use black at all because um, I tend to think black kills a painting. I know it looks black here, but it, it isn't. And you'll see later uh, as the painting progresses. Uh, one thing I should say is that um, my camera does very good still shots. Uh, movies are okay, uh, but it doesn't really give the true colour of the painting. So um, at the end you'll see the painting uh, more realistically. So I'm just plodging on some shapes uh, just to plan out in my mind roughly where I want my lights and darks and also the shape of the horizon. The horizon will change slightly as the painting goes on. Yes, I'm ambidextrous. It's useful. So uh, I'm applying pressure um, as I do this, just to get some light areas and some dark areas. But I will later on in the painting um, use some tissue, uh, sort of kitchen towel stuff, to wipe away areas that I will apply lighter colours on later. Now this is um, the sky starting out. I, I like, as you probably know by now, I quite like a bit of drama in my skies. This is um, a mixture of red oxide and Payne's grey. I've also put a little bit of white in there as well. So I'm sort of uh, after uh, movement. I like to get a bit of movement in the sky. Uh, you won't see many of my paintings, if well, maybe none at all, that just have a blue sky with white fluffy clouds. It just doesn't do it for me. And as you can also tell, I use a lot of oil mixed with the paint to start with. As I work out the composition of a picture, um, I also keep my mind on how to keep the person's or the viewer's attention in the painting. And I, I tend to put things uh, of interest slightly to the right, in fact above centre slightly to the right. Although with a painting like this, uh, the above centre to the right area is actually probably going to be in the clouds, but that clump of bushes on the um, right is probably close enough. If I feel it's not good enough later, I'll get some contrast in the sky just above it, just to pull the attention over. The dark bit of cloud on the left, I've just speeded this bit up here just because it's a little bit boring. And now we are back to normal speed. Um, the dark area on the left uh, is what I call a stopper. It's so that as the person views the painting, there is something on the left to stop the eye from leaving the painting. If I had the horizon just as a straight line, there's always a danger the person viewing it will actually just zoom out the picture. They'll follow the line across the thing and uh, their attention will go. So by putting a little rise in the horizon and that bit of dark cloud there, that tends to pull the eye back into the picture. And I should apologise for the state of my studio. It's a bit of a mess, isn't it? My desk is like a, another planet sometimes. So I'm pushing a, a, a bit more paint into it here with a bit, of, bit more white added. This is not the final colour. It'll, uh, it'll have some uh, nice sparkly highlights in there later. It doesn't matter that some of the green goes in the sky. I don't know whether you're the same as me, but sometimes you do see green in the sky. Well, I do. Now, while, the, while I'm not 
appearing in the picture it's because I'm standing back having a think so thinking is done I'm back on it and um, one thing I should point out is the the eye loves contrast and you can't show light in a painting unless you have some dark light on light doesn't work for me anyway maybe I'm sure there are people who disagree with that For those who may be interested, um, the brushes I'm using for this just came from the local hardware store. They're very cheap brushes. Okay, so I've got a bit of kitchen towel and I'm just wiping away areas where eventually light will fall on the landscape. Now by doing this, um, for later on in the painting, because I will be working on this while it's wet, and that you'll see that in part two, so by wiping away the paint, uh, it means that when I try to apply a lighter area later, um, it won't mix too much with the paint that's already on the canvas. Sorry about my shoulder. And you can also see here that I'm pushing the sky into the landscape. Um, this. Uh, this gives you a better feeling of realism, I think, um, to actually blend the colours together a bit. And also it gives you an instant misty effect. So some of my mixing, well, actually quite a lot of my mixing, is, is actually done on the painting rather than on the palette. So this is a really cheap brush. Um, I've put it through its uh, paces before I started painting by basically pulling as many loose hairs out of it as I can so that they don't end up on the painting. Now this little overhang of the trees here, eventually I will add some tree trunks, um, just uh, a few on the edge there. So this painting is actually very like one I did recently that uh, uh, someone showed a bit of interest in. Unfortunately, um, it's not available as uh, it's sold. So I'm sort of creating another one similar. Uh, it won't be exactly the same because um, that's just impossible, but uh, it'll be a similar um, feeling about it. Now, what I'm doing there, I'm, I'm still pushing the paint into the sky color. And as you can see, that gives you instant perspective it fades the stronger colours of the foreground so that they look more distant. And then into that uh, colour, I start to put a few darks and lights. And sometimes, as you can see there, I'm pushing away paint uh, without using a tissue. It has a similar effect, it just leaves a bit more texture. And also you can see that I don't use the brush just in one position. I turn the brush around to make it work for me because uh, it won't do it unless you tell it to do it. Now you can see here, I hope, if you have this on full screen, you can see that uh, you can see the texture of the canvas. Quite often lately I've been painting on MDF. I think in America you call it Samsonite. Um, I put three coats of gesso on the Samsonite and then paint on top and the effect is that when you wipe back you get you get almost uh, a white effect. It'll leave a little bit of a stain but you won't have the texture of the canvas. Uh, sometimes I like that, sometimes I don't. It seems to work on this picture um, and probably because it's such a big painting. It's actually uh, 59 inches wide and uh, the depth I think is about 19 inches something like that and in centimeters that's uh, 50 centimeters high by 100, 150 centimeters wide now one thing i don't want to do on a painting is spend hours and hours and hours painting every blade of grass so i as you can see here i turn the brush on its side to get a, a quick effect and the same with trees if I want lots of texture on the trees, I'll use a piece of tissue um, and scrunch it up into a bowl and uh, dab it on to get a texture from that. Now 
This is where you have to be quite light-handed about what you're doing, just just to um, give a hint of texture uh, without applying too much paint. The effect this gives uh, is what I, I've heard it from other artists as well, and I, I use this um, term, this phrase frequently. Is um, eventually you will learn. The more you do this, you will learn how to paint undrawn detail, and by that I mean um, you can you can paint to a certain level of detail, so that the eye or the brain of the viewer is um, convinced there is something there when all you've done is give an impression. Um, there's, there's lots of different types of impressionism. Um, there's the typical Monet pretty painting type thing and Renoir and uh, that, that, those sort of artists. And, and they're also the tonalists and I'm, I tend to lean towards tonalism more than impressionism. Uh, particularly the um, American tonalists. Um, one particular one is um, uh, a guy called um, Bruce Crane, and the other one is uh, George Innes. Uh, amazing artists, and uh, I've, I've studied their work for years and uh, find it fascinating. And they mastered the um, the art of undrawn detail. So anyway, I'm working on my sky here, and again, as you probably know, I don't like. Uh, I don't like well, what I call weak skies. I like a strong sky. Uh, and also, for, there are several reasons why I like a, a good dark sky. Is that if you, if you put the darker colours at the top, it will give the feeling that the clouds are coming over your head, which of course is what clouds do. A, a lot of people, when they paint pictures, they will paint a blue sky and put little white fluffy clouds on it, and it looks like a backdrop. It's like someone's hung up a piece of cloth with some clouds painted on it, um, and it doesn't really it doesn't really come over your head. And I like that look about a painting. It's like it gives more depth, so you get that effect on the landscape and that effect on the sky, and it increases the perspective a lot. So I'm being quite rough here with the sky. I'm not I'm not um, trying to do any detail. I'm just sort of blocking in some colours. And eventually, uh, later, um, I'll use a more fluffy brush and um, smooth it out a little bit. I won't smooth it too much because I do like a bit of texture, but I, I will try and lose some of the brush strokes. Okay, here's a slightly more side view uh, of the picture. Give you an idea of the length. It is a, it is a big painting. And, um, the thing also I tell people when I when I teach people, there's something you should always bear in mind. And I can see I've only got a few minutes left of um, time to get this in. Um, paint as if no one's watching. Paint as if you don't care if it goes wrong. Completely get the idea in your head that painting is difficult. Get that out. Get it out of your head. Forget it. Painting is not difficult. The difficult part is convincing yourself that it's easy. Sounds a bit strange, I know, but if I, when I was younger, if I started a painting and I thought, oh my God, this is going to be difficult, I would struggle. Whereas I, one day I realized, um, you know, and it was a, a teacher of mine convinced me of this. Um, just, just believe you can do it. It's, it's, you know, it's like, um, let me put it this way. When I was a commercial artist, uh, if someone asked me to design something, what I would never say is, oh, I think I can do that. I think I'll, I think I'll be OK doing it. Whereas, uh, and I would struggle. Whereas now, if I say, yep, no problem, I can do it. You can do the same. So trust me on this. Get it in your head. Painting isn't difficult. And thanks for watching.